Hey, this is Coach AK. Have you found yourself in a rut and wanted to get to the next step and really improving your life? Have you faced adversity? Well, if so, I think we're all gonna get to that point in our lives. Today on the show, we have Anthony Trucks, author of Trust Your Hustle, A Life Forged by Fire. Now, Anthony Trucks has an amazing story and also has an accomplished background. Three times in the NFL, also the owner of Trucks Training and as an international speaker. He's gonna be talking to us about overcoming adversity and living the life we want to live. Anthony Trucks, how you doing today? I'm doing very well, how are you? Man, I'm doing good, doing good. Now, uh, now, uh. now I know you're, you're a busy guy, so really appreciate you taking the time to, to, to speak with me today and also give valuable advice to all the parents coaches and athletes out there tell me a little about about your background you're the author of trust your hustle a life forged by fire where did that title come from tell me a little bit about that book uh the title came randomly in a uh, a meeting i had when i used to own a gym and i had huge retreats with a mastermind group and it popped up and i didn't do anything with the name for a couple of years uh, and then I got to a point in life where uh, some things had kind of transpired and uh, essentially I had to apply the concept of trust your hustle to my life and, and I got to the point where I realized I wanted to kind of shift my career from what I was doing which was owning a gym and kind of being in the fitness world to be, uh, reaching more people. I'm in a parking lot because part of my job tells me now I'm traveling all around so I kind of stop where I can to do meetings <laughs> like this so I happen to be about six feet from a car. Um, but essentially, the, the, the Trust Your Hustle book is my life. It's a culmination of everything that I've experienced in, in complete chronological order. I honestly haven't even read the book thoroughly. I just wrote it as I remember it happening and that I published it. How long, how long did, you, did it take you to write the book? Um, in, entirety or actuality? So entirety, I wrote the first chapter and it was uh, very difficult to write. So I just didn't want to write the rest because it, it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel, I didn't like the way I felt. And so I sat on it for about eight months, and then I drove away to a uh, place called Sparks, Nevada, and I wrote the last, uh, probably, I want to say it's like 160, maybe like 200 pages of it, just in a room in seven days. So oh, really? I sat in a room for seven days and just banged the whole book out. And it wasn't like I was having to craft or create, I literally just wrote as I remember my life happening. I mean, a little bit about the book. I know you, you, you talk about this when you're speaking, but... You didn't. You were in the NFL. You travel all over the world yeah. and you speak. But where you started off was that the path that 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 that, that you were leading towards? No. Uh, the the thing that I tell people and what I do now is I is I travel. But I want you to live an unexpected life once you learn to trust your hustle. And so, from my beginnings of, of foster care and a bunch of abuse and torture and. And being adopted by an all-white family and, and dealing with things, you know, having a, a child when I was in college. and I mean, the stories of ups and downs, they do not stop until, like, today. You know, they're still going. Uh, and some some would actually take a lot of people down, but the reality is, like, it's just, uh, it happened, and, I, and it came out in a book that was kind of thoroughly there. And, I mean, it, it's it's not something you would expect a person like me to be doing now. You wouldn't expect it. If I wrote on paper, hey, this is what happened to me, if you read the book, you wouldn't expect this person to come out of it. And it's not because I'm special, or like some, some, you know, like, you know, Adonis, I'm not full of myself. It's just I have applied some really weird mind hacks in my life that I, I didn't realize I was doing until later on in life. And now I go out and I share those concepts because I'm, I'm not doing what a person who I've experienced typically would be doing. So the title, Trust Your Hustle. What does that mean? Describe yeah. what trust your hustle means. Trust your hustle was a, uh, I didn't, at first it just it was just like, it, exactly what you hear it as, like, yeah, trust your hustle. But I was like, what does that mean? You know, how do you tie that in? And, and trust your hustle essentially for me is this concept of if you want to achieve something massive in life at, uh, at any given time, you have to apply a ridiculous amount of hustle, hard work to get it. Uh, is a truck going by? Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Like, like I said, Anthony, we're appreciating that you're able to take the time. You do a lot, of, a lot of stuff throughout the day. You travel all over the world. So getting an hour to speak to you is, 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 is a blessing. So we can hear you, though. Okay, cool. I was making sure. I don't want to cut it off. But essentially, Trust Your Hustle came around when uh, I desired to find out what it was about me that allowed me to do the things I do. Like, why is it I, I able to come from those things and, 
you know, play in the NFL or write a book or open a business and run it well or travel and speak or create things. And so I found that for me, a, a lot of it is like I have this distinct like faith in myself. Like I trust that I can do things. And so I started like boiling down what does it mean to have that. And what I found was, uh, is, you know, faith is this thing that will make you move forward without knowing the end result. It's just this knowing of if I put the effort in, it'll come to fruition the way I want. And so I sat back and I said, well, why is it that people get faith? And, you know, faith comes from belief. A lot of people lack this self-belief. So if I have no belief, I can have no faith. And it's not like religious faith, but just like just belief in faith. And so I started saying, well, why is it that people lack this belief? What is it that underlies belief? And what I found underlies belief is trust. So if somebody tells you something and you believe them, it's because you trust them. And so a lot of these things become these external factors. I, I trust someone else, therefore I believe in them. I'll have faith they're going to do what they say they're going to do. And then I realize a lot of people don't flip that inwards. They don't look at what they have in themselves. They don't trust themselves or trust their abilities. Therefore, they can have no belief. Then they have no faith. And then when it comes to moving forwards, they just don't move forwards. So it's, uh, it's like the stagnation. Uh, and so essentially, I was like, well, where do you develop trust? That's a big question. Okay, if we need trust, where do you develop it? And trust is an emotion that comes from actions, just like love comes from actions. Trust comes from these actions you have in your past of success or failure. So if you have failure in your past, you don't trust you can do anything. But if you have success in your past, to be able to have some trust in your abilities, that leads to belief in yourself, that leads to a faith in yourself. And so essentially, I was like, well, how do you, how do you have success? That's the next question. How do you have success in life? And what I find is you have to have a really deep, like what they call why. Like, ever heard like what's your why? I feel heard like what's your why? And for me, I feel like the why is this arbitrary surface um, answer. So if I ask you why do you do this podcast, you'll give me and it'll come out quick. And what I found is that reason typically isn't the one that'll make you do it when you're sick, you're tired, mm -hmm. broke your leg. Like right. it's not going to make you do something when it becomes time. And you need to have that kind of drive to get the successes you need to have to build trust. And so what I found was that, that deep intrinsic driver is the one that is so heavily rooted and so deep that it's truly embarrassing to speak out loud in public. And it mm -hmm. takes a lot for people to get there, but once you get to that one that's like, oh crap, I don't even want somebody else to know that that's what drives me, that's the one that'll make you move past literally every single obstacle that comes up in your life. And well, you'll keep pushing, you'll move past, you'll have success, you'll build trust, you'll build belief, you'll have faith, and then you can trust your hustle. No, it makes perfect sense. I remember when I was in college at the University of, of Oregon, uh, me and Anthony actually, uh, he was a football player at the University of Oregon. I ran track and field. And I remember my why, um, especially when we got to nationals, was for me, yeah, I wanted to be you know, top in the country. But ideally, when I had to ask a few reasons down in, in the why column, was I was doing it for my parents. And I realized that six kids in college we weren't we didn't grow up very rich and that additional why was every single time i was running down that home stretch in that 400 um it was my parents mind it was my parents on my mind to get to the finish line and not to be yeah. number one in the world um because they made a lot of sacrifices for me to get there so that that why makes so much sense so what would you say is would you say understanding that why um, or, or something else is the reason that holds most people from reaching their dreams? No, it's, it's a combination of a bunch of things. I think the two um, most predominant factors are, because uh, you could have drive. A coach in college of mine used to say, effort without focus is wasted effort. So if I have this drive and I'm working because I know my why, but I have no path in place or no clear-cut direction to get there, I won't move. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people know why, but then what happens is they don't move so they still remember the why. Now they beat themselves up and then they, they start taking their way away like they start getting less and less trust in themselves. And the reality is, if I tell you, hey, uh, AK, I want you to cross that river over there. It's a rushing river, you know, 100 feet across. You're like, well, I don't know how to get across that. But if I turn you around and show you a bridge, will you cross the river? Well, yeah, yeah, the bridge is right there. Like, mm -hmm. I see this bridge. So a lot of people, that, you know, it could be like my, my son's on the other side of the, of the river choking, but if I still can't get over there, because there's no bridge, I'm not going to go. Like I'm, I'm going to get washed away and die. So for a lot of people, they have the why, but they have no structure, no plan, no idea how they're going to get to the end result. I mean, you were talking about the, 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 the bridge aspect, or even when I'm thinking about something as well is, you speak all over the world. Um, yeah. You're doing it more full time. And I think most of us know the, the number one fear that most of us have the number one fear of all Americans, even more than death, 
is public speaking. And this is something that you do as yeah. a profession. What do you think, what did you do to, to overcome that fear? Or what can people do to take the necessary steps to overcome their fear? Uh, you got to find out whatever it is that holds you back and, and find the obligation to have to do it. An obligation is, uh, is different than like a, a, like a rinky-dink desire. So, for example, like when I speak, I, I get up on stage and I'm very vulnerable because I'm talking about things that have happened to me in my life. And a lot of people are like, they fear it. If, uh, for example, let's say, uh, let's say you're, you're the best lumpia maker in the world. You make lumpias. Don't ask why, I just chose lumpias. Okay. <laughs> and then somebody says, hey, can you get up and talk about how to retread a tire? Well, if you get up in front of someone and you don't want to do that, you're like, I don't want to reach for the tire. You're going to be nervous. Mm -hmm. But if you if you understand, like a lupus, they're saying, I want you to tell me how to make lupus. Oh, I, I can kill. I'll tell you. And they'll go nonstop about lupus because they know about it. It's this competence. They know something, so they gain this confidence. So when I get up on stage, I'm very competent about what it is I'm talking about because it's me. But on top of that, to get over that also, that fear of the, the, the unknown is... I don't feel like the story I have to share is something that I can choose to give or not to give. It's an obligation for me to share it with the world because people benefit from it. I get emails literally that say, you saved a life today. That was all I got in the heading last week. Was one of them was, you saved my life today. Mm. And so for me, it's like I don't have the choice to share the story. It's not like I, I, I kind of want to today. It's like I, God put me in a position to experience this stuff, to give me the strength to come out to share this story. Because people need to hear it and it helps them. So therefore, it's not my story to decide if I want to or don't want to tell, but it's an obligation for me. So when it comes to goals, you connect to something that is like, it has to be done. It's an obligation to be done. Not like a kind of, or I'd like to, or I need to, but like, there is a reason that this thing must take place. Right. Um, so this seems like you're talking about is how it needs to be done. Yeah. So somebody starting at, at step A, yeah. and they know they want to get to step Z, and there's mm -hmm. many steps. So what do you do if you're in a rut, you're facing adversity, and you want to take the next steps to improve your life? Where do you start? Uh, first thing we start with is why you want to do it in the first place. Because if, if So let's say you know, right? We're, we're past the point of, of guessing. We know very specifically why you need to get this done. The next step is creating a plan, and that's that's really it's, it's that clear cut. It's you've got to create some kind of plan, but with the realization that the plan is going to change, it's not going to be perfect. There, there's literally no perfect plan, um, but if you have something in place, you start moving forward. So even if it's like I need to get to Z, and maybe you just you get from I don't know A to to I don't know M, right? But you're not to Z yet. It doesn't matter. Let's just keep moving anyways. We got B, C, D. You know, we all these. So start moving is the next portion. So once you have this plan in place, although it may not be perfect. You got to start moving. A lot of people, they don't trust that the plan's going to end up the way they want it to. And the truth is, it's not. Life is what happens between mm -hmm. your plans. But if your why is big enough, once you start moving, you'll find the next direction to go. So if you're walking down like Indiana Jones, they're walking down those, those little, you know, places that have like the stones in the ground. Well, I don't know the perfect path, but if this thing gives out, I'm going to put my foot somewhere else to stay afloat because I don't want to die. So if you start moving forwards and that stone falls out, maybe uh, F falls out, that's fine, step to G. Right. Find a way to stay afloat, mm -hmm. step to G. But you will only do that if like, it's an obligation, if your why is there. So first step is know why you're doing it. Have clarity on why you're doing it in the first place. Next thing is create that plan. Third thing is just go. Don't wait for the perfect plan because it will never, it'll never come to fruition. You'll never, never see the perfect plan because it's always going to change. But just move. Take an action. Just I mean, go. It's, it's important. I mean, I, I work with a lot of high school athletes, you know, parents and coaches. Um, and you've gone through that system. You've gone through the, the, the high school system, the college system, the, the professional, you know, playing professional football. And you can now look back on it. What do you think has been the biggest contributor to your overall success? Um, success. Success is my biggest contributor to overall success. So... Mm -hmm. I take it back to the whole concept of why, like, and I don't mean massive success. I mean success in, like, getting up in the morning and going, going somewhere, you know. Like, there's times where I'm like, I don't really want to go. But I get up, I get dressed, and I get there, and then I meet somebody that if I hadn't have met them, I wouldn't get the next job, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like those, that little success of just getting up and getting there is a success. So when you have those little ones in place, those are the biggest thing for me to say, well, I got this success 
because of the last 50 successes I've had. Right. I mean, it's that success story um, is rare in some ways. You have you hear about the stories of these professional athletes that have made millions of dollars, that yeah. have blown it, that do not effectively transition. I think we heard about a situation of a, a basketball player, David Harrison from the University of Colorado, who's working at McDonald's. Yeah. And he broke, troubled athletes. You have Allen Iverson, all these athletes. Um, what do you think is the challenge to a lot of these professional athletes once they leave the ranks to to effectively transition into into life. That's a good one. I mean, I dealt with the same thing. The problem is you have to find out who you are without the sport. For me, like, I I get done with football, and I'm like, oh, I, I'm Anthony Trucks, a football player, but I'm not playing football anymore. So I didn't know who I was. Um, the driving force for a lot of things was removed because I've now spent the last 12 years of my life developing and honing this skill to be the best in the world at something that no longer applies to anybody else's jobs in the world besides that one. And so what I had to do was step back, and one biggest thing was drop my ego. Uh, mm -hmm. I had to realize that at the end of the day, I'm a human being just like everybody else, so no job is below me. Uh, the next thing I had to do is I had to realize that I'm still a good man without the game. Like, I can still okay. do great things, still be a great father. There are still people who look up to me. Like, I, I tell a lot of people, you are someone to someone. So I was still someone to my son, to my wife, to my mom, to my dad, and so I couldn't just sit there and say, well, I don't know what to do now. I just bottled my head. You know, I just I had to realize that I had to realize that there was a bigger picture besides what I was doing, and then um, explore. Because for me, I was just doing sports. I didn't explore the world to see what else I have passion about. And so I bottled up because I didn't know what it was, and I just didn't want to venture out or look stupid because I'd been taught in my career, you know, my sports career, don't look bad in the field. You know, it'll transition to not being, you know, to being cut. So in the regular world, once you get out of sports, like you need to go venture out with the opportunity to potentially look stupid to learn, to see what you're good at, what you're not good at, and where you stand. And once in a while, like you're lucky, not once in a while, but a lot of the while, if you put yourself out far enough, you'll happen upon it. You'll, be, you'll find something that you were, like, you'll find you were blessed to do and you were built to do. Like, I am built to do what I do now more than I ever was built to play in the NFL. Wow. So, I mean, obviously, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, looking back, if you were talking to the high school Anthony Trucks, what advice would you give them? Uh, start a blog. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get people to follow you because you can make a living later on. Uh, but the high school Anthony Trucks, I, I don't know if I would tell them to do much different, man. I was value-wise and uh, concept-wise of how I lived my life, I'm pretty consistent. Similar to why I don't have any skeletons in my closet, thank God. Um, I've done no crazy, stupid stuff. But anything I have done, I've been really honest about it. Um, but high school Anthony Trucks, if you're saying athlete progressing forward, it's realize that this is a, it's a learning, it's like a class. You may play in the NFL, but it just means you got your doctorate in football. you got to learn. And so uh, you're at some point going to be done with that. And you can't act like a fool all your life and get tattoos in your nose. It's just not going to look right. So realize that as you're progressing through, you're going to meet people. You're going to learn things. Watch how the business operates. Watch how people interact. Because when you get done, you're going to go into this world, and I say this world, the one outside of sports, and you will have these amazing intangibles that you won't even realize you have. Like You'll honestly forget the stuff you know. And what happens is you don't realize it, but when they put you next to somebody else who hasn't experienced what you've experienced, gone through what you've gone through, learned it, they will pale in comparison to what you know, uh, but you won't even realize it. So I would say be cognitive of the fact that you understand how to push past adversity or ab adversity. Um, so it's like you see these problems, like you, you can get through them. Um, be able to realize that you understand how to communicate with people, how to take constructive criticism, how to compete, how to how to say I lost, like how to be a good loser, like you know how to be humble, how to be able to even lean on a teammate because some people are all like information whores and they want it all to themselves, but you know a team works with you leaning on somebody else, like all these things that teams uh, in sports, even if it's not a team sport, you know just realize how people do it. It could be a coaching, like how the coaches lean on each other when you're playing an individual sport, like track, like you did. Um, but if you see those things and you realize, like, hell, I have a good base in that, then you can pull from that and feel a lot more confident about your abilities to pursue a different career when you get out of the sport you play. So overall, then, what I mean, what are you most proud of? What are you most... Uh, uh, I didn't go bankrupt. <laughs> uh, let's say 75% of full players go bankrupt within three years. I, I didn't go bankrupt. It's huge. Um, I am also most proud of the fact that when I got done, I, I went and trained nine-year-olds. Like, I was an mm -hmm. NFL guy, but I was serving nine-year-olds. I was, you know, I had to be there on time for these kids and, and listen to what they had to tell me and, 
I had to coach him. It's very humbling to realize, like, I'm I'm just a human being. I'm I'm no better than anybody else just because I happen to wear a helmet with an NFL logo on it. You know, it's just I, I'm glad I didn't get sucked up in the whole cloud of being like this this dude because I know guys like that who played the league like 20 years ago. You did, I know, but you're just a guy, man. So move right. on. I mean, but today, you know, um, you've done a lot of stuff. What what type of stuff are you working on now? What are your current projects? Oh, man. So now I'm, I'm developing a product to help people get more done in life. Uh, once they find out what it is they want to get done, I just met with this PR woman out uh, where I'm at, and, and we had a very good conversation, which re it's like reshaped my entire thought process on some things. Um, I am working in, uh, on the board of a company called Empower to Play. <laughs> I'm I am... Uh, I'm, I'm in the process of, of recrafting another book, uh, speaking. I'm a father. I still consult for the power company out here, which is called Pacific Gas and Electric. And uh, I'm, I'm creating a lot of things for them from scratch for their, their health and ergonomics. So I'm, I kind of dab in a lot of things. I am a, a serial entrepreneur in certain areas, but I just I like to express myself. To be honest, it all boils down to I like expressing what I'm good at. So if I like, I'm good at talking to people, I, I talk to people. If I'm good at creating stuff or doing fitness or communicating or teaching, I like to do that. It doesn't matter what capacity. If somebody asked me to find out how to um, teach someone to buy a, a pair of um, knitted socks, like I'll figure it out just because I want to see if I can. And so it's a matter of can I express myself in a certain capacity and then I'm, I'm able to be smart enough to know I have to be smart so I learn from everybody. I don't cut people off. I don't, I don't shut doors. I learn and then from there I can match my, my skills with my, my wit and my knowledge and I create ways to make it like monetizable to where I can actually make an income from it. So by the time you 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 take your last breath on earth, what is something that you really want to accomplish? What's still on your I want to have a humongous funeral. Hmm. Humongous funeral. So at the end of the day, like I, the, the the sad I say the sad part is we have to in this society we have to make a living. You have to make money, you have to do this and you know, all these different things, and so how I do that's different from somebody else. But at the end of the day, um, the most important thing to me is do it with a sense of moral, like like values. You know who I am, my my what I, I see as like my principles for life. Because when it's all said and done, no one's gonna remember me or come around because I, I gave them a product on how to get more done, or because you know it was a cool speech. They will come and see me at my funeral if I connect to them personally. And so in that capacity, that's my goal. So it's all the things I do. I mean, so develop great relationships. Enjoy, you know, have have copy and kind of hype. You know, this is this is life. This is. I think some of we get lost in realizing that we are living life, not living to live life. If we're living, but we're we're always in the capacity. Of, like, I gotta get this. I gotta get this. But then then my life will be okay, or then I can have this in life. But in the moment of it now. So I appreciate what I'm doing now, and in moments I appreciate my expression to create better life moments later. Right. I mean, you're to to do that, to touch the lives you want to touch, to to build the businesses and make the impact that you want to have on the world. You're a busy guy. Like I said, we're having a conversation as you're at a Starbucks, moving from point A to point B. How do you find your balance? How do you find your, uh, your, your yeah your balance in life? I don't know, man. I don't know if you ever find balance. I I, I think it's sometimes I'm on one side of the teeter totter more than the other one. Uh, the balance is to be where I'm at when I'm at. So when I'm at a place mentally, I'm there mentally. Uh, and that was the biggest thing for me is realizing that if I'm, I don't get something done right this very moment, I, the world's not going to end. Mm -hmm. And so the balance comes from momentary decisions. Like when I'm in the moment, when I go home and I'm on this call, I'm going right back to my house. Uh, and then I'm essentially going to be with my kids. And so I could sit in that, you know, in that time frame with my kids on my computer trying to make this product I'm trying to make or, you know, create something new. But... I'm not there. Like I'm, I'm there, but I'm not there mentally, and I'm decreasing the value of that moment. And so I think for me, it's just appreciating the exact moments I'm in. And, uh, and the balance comes from shutting my brain down and focusing right where I'm at when I'm there. Okay. So living, just living mindfully, appreciating the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think for a lot of us, we're always trying to, to live in the future. Or we, can't, or we can't let go of the past, but the way that we define our future is how we act in yeah. the present. Exactly, um, it's true. So we gotta appreciate the time that we have now. 
So what what's next for you? What's what's the next thing on your on your on your list? What are you what are you working on now? Like the very next thing. The very next thing is to get this product created because it's something that I uh, I run in a couple different worlds. I'll say worlds because there's a bunch of them. Uh, there's a world for people who make sandals. I don't know it, but there's a world that exists there. So in the world I'm in now, it's like personal development and helping people uh, with things that I can create from research I've done. So at this very moment, the next thing is to finish this thing I've been making. Uh, to give to people to allow them some structure how to like better structure their life like how to get more things done that's it people want to get more done I, I talk to people all the time about what we're talking about how do you pursue a goal to get success whatever it is you want to do and what I find is a lot of people are like yeah I want this I, just, I, still, I don't have the time and one of it's the, what's the perception of their time and two it's using the time when they have it not thinking about what they're going to do when they have time so we can sit here all day and be like, yeah, at some point I got to get this done. I don't know how I'm going to get it done. Hey, some, maybe I'll do this and like we're going to spend the next hour thinking about how or I just say, damn it, I'm doing it and I just do it. And so for me, I don't I don't spend much time thinking about what I'm going to do. I just pick something and roll and, and that's that's part of kind of how I want to teach people to do things and how to use tools to structure up and, uh, and develop habits for yourself. People have horrible habits and if I can get the power of a habit, which is you do something almost unknowingly and un honestly effortless at some point. If I can help you establish and create good habits of productivity to get things done for your life with a good end result, it, it shapes things massively for people. It changes people's perspectives on what they're doing. It changes their relationships in life. It changes like the, their their ability to, to climb the ladder they're climbing. Like it, if you can get stuff done, you'd be surprised at how much more like stuff you are able to achieve and accomplish. It. Accomplish. Right. Good. I mean, final question. Um, what are, what's one thing, final wisdom that you can give to, to any of the listeners, any parents, coaches, athletes, individuals in general, just a last uh, nugget of knowledge you could share? Yeah. Last one would be, uh, I think our biggest hindrance, there's probably two tie-ins. One is the ego, which is tied to the final one. The ego is, I call everyone's greatest obstacle. Mm -hmm. It's what stands in the way of you getting better. It's you telling yourself, like, oh, I got that figured out, or I don't need help in that, or I'm good. Like, that ego of not wanting to say, like, yeah, you know, I'm pretty shitty there. Excuse my language. I had to fix this. Um, or be able to say, like, you know, hey, I, I need to improve here. And so that ego stops from the next thing, which is we get judgmental of people. So I may walk into a room and look at somebody and think, ah, it's just a scrub. I can't talk to him. He can't help me. And I found that those judgments affect the way you perceive someone's information affect the, the person you may talk to in the first place. I believe that right now I've, I've sat here and there's probably been five people that have walked by me that have the answer to a, a, a problem I may have now or in the future that could mm. literally change my life. And if my, my ego gets in the way and thinks, oh, I don't need their help, I won't pursue the, the conversation, or if I judge them and say, oh, they're just a nobody, I never have the conversation, I never learn that, I never get any better. And so for me, I think the biggest one is as people we judge. We judge the person. We judge what they do. We judge what they've decided to do with their lives. Um, sometimes people aren't doing what I would view as being my version of great. Are they any less great than me? No, because their scale is relative. They're a different version of great. But if I judge them upon my scale, then I never let their insight into my life to help better me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's so many people on the streets that we could get um, like nuggets of knowledge from. But we only think, oh, if you're not making a million dollars, if you're not here, if you're not there, then I'm not even going to listen to you. You know, but yeah. we could get some of the best advice from the person sitting next to us <laughs> at the bus stop, in the grocery store, but we never take that time to uh, to connect. So thank you for exactly. that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I just want to appreciate Anthony for you taking the time and your busy schedule to 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 share your thoughts, to share your story, and give us advice and uh, tips to overcome fears, to how to handle adversity, how to improve our life. You're a great resource and I, uh, I thank you for, for everything that you've done. And you're only in your, your early 30s. You still got yeah, 60 more yeah. years to, to change the world and I'm pretty sure they're gonna need a stadium um, for your funeral. So I just want to say, so. say thank you for that, man. Yeah, no problem, man, thank you. Okay, so I just want to say this is Coach AK with AskCoachAK.com, the leading resource in maximizing athletic performance in college recruiting. I just want to say <coughs> one thing, Anthony, I kind of forgetting about this piece is, where can somebody uh, find where you are, um, order your book, um, hear about some of the stuff that you're doing? 
Uh, you can go to anthonytrucks.com. Uh, information is on there. I mean, the website's my website. There's also a blog that's tied to my social media and the videos I put every day, and I put videos out every week as well. So it's all up there. Okay. And your book is called Trust Your Hustle, <coughs> A Life Forged by Fire. So to all of our listeners, yeah. I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Until next time, be great. All right.